Okay, so I'm making some ingots right now, and I wanted to show you, to share with you some things that I've tried. I tried this little pan. This happens to be a little pan that I bought at Home Depot, and it had a magnet on the bottom. It was used for holding screws and stuff. Um, it makes some pretty good ingots. They're a little bit large, though. I mean, if you look at my hand in relation to the ingots, they're a little bit large. It probably wouldn't fit very well in one of the... Uh, uh, furnaces. Um, the next thing I tried was a muffin pan. Makes a very nice sized ingot, but some of them get stuck and they won't, you know, you have a hard time getting them out. And uh, if you look at the muffin pan over here, it broke uh, three of them. I mean, I just bought this thing like 10 minutes ago and it already knocked three things out. It's because the way they make it, they put them in here. Uh, they're like they're not they're not one solid piece of metal. They're just kind of set in there. So they make a very nice sized ingot, but like I said, I have trouble with them sticking. So I thought, well, maybe I'll try a tuna can. Well, let's see what happened here. Tuna can, nah. This is the result of a tuna can. <laughs> I had to rip that thing out. It's too thin and it bends too easily. Kind of the same thing with the muffin pan. So, I have an idea and I'll be sharing that with you. Hello everybody. I just got back from my local hardware store and I bought a two foot section of inch and a half angle iron. This angle iron is an eighth inch thick and I'm going to share with you how I can take this single piece of angle iron and make what I call the perfect ingot mold. This piece cost me seven dollars and fifty cents and it's going to make a very nice three cavity ingot mold. Okay I got these pieces cut and basically what I ended up with was three pieces four inches long and two pieces six inches long. Now what I've got is, I've got my little cordless little 7 volt Makita grinder here and right now if you look at this uh, these pieces you'll see all these burrs and they're real sharp so I'm going to take a little time right now just real quick to get rid of some of these burrs. does not have to be like a real big serious job just just kind of get rid of the burrs a little bit nothing too fancy just try to get rid of the burrs make sure you got your safety glasses on while you're doing this and like I said it's it doesn't have to be too significant just uh, get rid of the burrs so that they're not sharp when you're dealing with them and you notice I have my gloves on now This little grinder is a Makita 7.2 volt grinder. Uh, I don't even know if they make this tool anymore. I've had it since probably 93. The battery lasts about 10 minutes and it's really good for light duty grinding. that's about it. I've got them all grinded up. 
they're uh, at this point the ones that you want to make sure that are really close on the length are these four inch ones you want to make sure that they're pretty darn close to being the same length those are going to be the the cavities for the ingots the two six inch ones if you have one that's a little longer or a little shorter that's going to be okay so don't worry about the six inch ones too much just the four inch ones they have to be pretty close looks like I may have missed this spot on this one So that's it for now. We'll see you at the welder. Okay, right now you can see that I have my gloves on. What I've done is I've just very lightly I've tacked these pieces together. Tacked these two places here so that it'll hold the pieces together so they don't spread apart from each other. And then I just tacked these three spots here. As you notice, I got work pants safety glasses and of course my welding helmet so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the welding side on the bottom side okay I'm gonna pour I'm gonna pour into these areas but I don't want it leaking out of these corners where the connections are made so I'm gonna weld underneath on all of these sections right here see I keep checking the inside where the lead's going to pour as I go because I, I don't want to get any kind of burrs inside here because if I do that'll make the lead hang up when I go to, to dump it out. So I'm checking on each weld and so far everything looks good. Let's finish these two. Now this one here I notice it's a little bit deep, it's a little bit uh, separated, so I'm going to have to really uh, move back and forth with my weld a little bit to fill that, that hole. So I'm going to go down, up, down. Ok, 
Okay, I still have a little hole down there. Okay, let's take a look. Oh yeah, that looks good. Filled in really nice. Okay, let's go down on this back side right here. Looks good. Now the main objective right now in this welding is to make sure, again, that there's no holes where lead can leak out and also to make sure that there's no big welds or anything that are going to make it hard for the uh, lead to come out. So two things I'm really looking for. So I'll repeat the process. I'll go up, down, up, down, up, down. Good. see what I've got. Uh, you notice inside, I wish I had a little pointer, let's see. This is the best I have right now is a stick. Inside, down here in these little areas, in there you can see they're nice and clean. And that's what we're going to need. Check the other side nice and clean. There's a little bit of burrs but that'll be able to be knocked off and it'll be able to be ground off. So the back side there's my little welds. Not the prettiest welds in the world but they're definitely functional. Now underneath these connections here which would be these low points I'm gonna go ahead and weld those. Technically, you could skip this step if you wanted to.
now that I got all my welding done, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little water in each of these cavities and then I'll come back in like 10 minutes and see if they're holding water. So I'll come check on it in about 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Everything, everything looks okay. Let's take a closer look. Flies flying around. Looks like we've got plenty of water. It's holding water. So if it's holding water, we know it'll hold lead. Okay, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grinder and my little welding hammer and I'm just going to go through it and make sure, again, that there's no little rough spots. So I'm fixing to put lead in and I don't want any rough spots for the lead to stick to. And what I mean by that is because I don't use a shielding gas when I weld, I use the flux core wire and sometimes the result is a little bit of slag, I guess you would call it, on the steel. So I'm just removing those small bumps. It's not nothing too significant. On the back side and the bottom, it doesn't really matter. I'm mainly looking for inside the cavities to make sure that they're clean so that we get a good release when we go to knock those units out. Another thing that you don't want to do at this point is you don't want to make like big hammer strikes and make gouges in the metal because then that would be a negative, that would be a, a uh, female if you will hole in the metal and the lead will flow into that and then it won't have nowhere to go. So the result would be again another hard release. Okay, I'm going to take my little grinder again and I'm going to grind all these little edges just to make sure that there's nothing sharp that I'm going to cut my fingers on. This step is not a real significant step. I'm just removing small amounts of metal. Just anything that would make it rough to the touch. And that's really about all it takes. One thing I want to note is that when you make your ingot mold, the reason I had to put them upside down and weld these tops flush with this area is because I want there to be a gap underneath the mold so that when I flip it over, 
and I let it hit like that so that the ingots can fall out. Okay, so that's what I want. I want to have a gap here. Don't forget that. That's pretty important. I made a mold one day and I didn't put that gap there. In fact, I'll show you what the mold looked like. It's a very nice little mold. It's a four cavity mold. But see, when I welded here, I don't know if you can see that or not because of the light. When I welded in these areas, the the length of this uh, uh, still right here was the same height as the height here. So what I had to do is I had to weld this piece on to get them to dump out. Okay, so see the difference? You just want to make sure that these are recessed here. This one they weren't. They were flush. They were recessed underneath because I thought it would be easier to build it that way you know by setting all the pieces down and then just holding the metal there tack 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 but it didn't work it works now because I had to weld this piece like I said you know I can do that and they'll fall out but the ones that I've made that have this area recessed they dump the ingots out very well in fact I'll show you a couple more this is a single cavity two inch angle mold that I made works really good and again it's recessed here so that when I dump the ingots they fall right out in this area that one works really well this one is basically a bigger version of what we're looking at right now and again they're recessed right here this is two inch angle iron they dump out real well Boom, just like that there's a hole under here that lets the ingots fall this one four, four uh, cavity two inch ingot mold and again they have this really recessed area the ingots fall out real well, real good so these are just other ideas that you could come up with. This is two inch angle iron. Um, they all work really good. The only one that I had a slight problem with was the very first one I made. And like I said, I welded this piece here. That corrected the problem. But since I'm trying to show you how to do this from the beginning, without no problems, make sure that these are recessed. For any of you who were wondering what kind of welder I was using, I've been using a Lincoln Electric Weld Pack 100. It's a good little welder. Uh, I use it for up to about quarter inch steel and it works great. So if you were just curious what kind of welder. I like it because it runs on 110 volt. You can plug it in a household uh, outlet. Right now I'm working on a batch of lead. It's just about ready to go. I have my new ingot mold sitting in front of me. And what my objective is, is to check out my new ingot mold and see how it does. This uh, batch of lead has a lot of dross in it. And what I mean by dross is all these impurities. So I need to skim all that out. I'm basically going to gather it all up together and I'm going to remove it because I don't want that into the lead that I'm going to be using for bullet casting or in our case today making ingots for casting so all this impurity comes out Another thing that you could do, if you'd like to remove more impurities, and I'm reaching for it here, you can see the new mold that I've just made. I'm going to take a piece of candle wax. I'm going to set it into the lead, and what's going to happen is it's going to flame up. 
Okay, I'm going to try to help it a little bit. I'm hoping that it'll flame up. There we go. And once it flames up, my plan is to stir that wax into the lead. Now don't stir too vigorously because you don't want to splash molten lead all over yourself. This lead is between 650 degrees and 700 degrees. So I'm mixing this uh, candle wax into the lead because what happens is the candle wax will melt away and any impurities that exist in the lead will attach themselves to the wax and it'll burn like it'll turn black and then it'll float to the surface as dross and I'll be able to remove it. This is a step that they call fluxing. Now there's another stuff that you could buy. It's called Marvel Lux, I think is what they call it. Uh, I've never used it, but I've heard very good things about it. I use candle wax. You know, I buy, I go down to Walmart, I buy 24 candles for $1.50. They're the little small candles. Each one I cut into four pieces, and that's what I use to flex my metal. Works good for me. So now I'm going to wait a couple seconds to let this settle, and then I'm going to collect all the dross one more time. This mold. I want to set it up here somewhere so it can start warming up. I want it to be somewhat warm because you don't want to put hot lead molten metal into a cold mold. You want your mold to be warm. Another thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to get any kind of water or liquid into your liquid lead that'll cause a steam explosion and they're they're pretty bad I've seen them happen before sometimes you might be sitting over your bowl looking at your lead mixing it around some sweat drops off your nose boom there it goes and it'll surprise you real quick it's no joke so I'm scraping the bottom scraping the sides I'm just trying to remove dross right now and I'm letting this mold heat up again I don't want to put hot lead in a cold mold For two reasons I don't want hot lead in that cold mold. One reason is it takes a better cast, or should I say it, it, uh, it uh, casts better to the surrounding area around it if that area is hot. And if it's cold, you don't get any kind of sloppy molding. Okay, from here, this mold is plenty hot. I'm going to take my ladle. I'm going to introduce the ladle into the lead very slowly because if this ladle was cold, boom, you know, I could get lead flying. So I want to do it real slow. And I'm going to hold my ladle in there for a few seconds because I want the ladle to heat up. If I don't heat the ladle up, what could happen is when I go to pour into my mold, the ladle could be cold and it could be chilling the lead as I pour and then I might not get a good pour. Okay, now I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. And when I set my ladle away, I don't want my ladle too far away from my mix. I want it pretty close. Pretty close to the heat, I mean. So I usually set it like right there. It holds the heat in it. This can, this can cool. 
I take these little pieces here, these little pieces that may have not made it in, carefully put them back into the mix. Don't throw them in there, otherwise they'll splash. Just set them in there. And we'll come back and we'll check this mold in a few minutes. Okay, those look like they've uh, had plenty of time to cool. Now I'm going to dump them out. Alright, let's take a look at these. I have a piece of wood underneath it. I'm basically going to flip it over. Bang it down on the wood a little bit. And there's my three ingots. Sitting next to me I have a bowl of water. I'm going to drop them in. Let them cool. And we'll come back and check them out. Well folks, there you have it. In my opinion, the perfect ingot mold for less than eight bucks. Makes a really nice sized ingot. Very clean looking. Does a great job. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found some information useful. Please feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to subscribe. I've got plenty of other things that I'm working on for future videos, and I hope you liked it. Thanks again, people. Have a good day. Bye.